In mid-September, China surprised governments around the world by halting shipments of something called rare earths, first to Japan, then four weeks later to the United States and Europe. The move intensified already urgent calls for a global push to find alternative sources of these little-known but increasingly crucial minerals. In the challenging terrain of the Canadian subarctic, Avalon Rare Metals Company is drilling 1,000 feet below the surface of a frozen lake to probe what they believe is a significant rare earths deposit. It's a risky, capital-intensive venture. Years of environmental permitting and construction lie ahead before the site will be operational. I think this is much, much bigger and more extensive. further south? I think it's, it's further, deeper. deeper. But Avalon's executives think their site might one day be one of the solutions to the world's rare earth supply crunch. Rare earths are the elements near the bottom of the periodic table, studied in high schools around the world. Neodymium, samarium, dysprosium, 17 in all. This is the new iPhone. They are in our cell phones and laptops. Military technology depends on them. And they are an indispensable ingredient in the so-called green technologies central to our alternative energy plans. If you would like to have alternate energy production of electricity, you're going to need rare earths without exception because the generators for electricity will be using large rare earth magnets. Jack Lifton is an industry analyst. If you're going to make a hybrid car of, of the current type, a full hybrid such as the Toyota Prius, you need a rare earth permanent magnet. But the problem is 95% of the world's rare earth supplies are mined and refined in China. The giant Bayan Obo mine in Inner Mongolia is the center of the industry. China used to mine rare earths primarily for export, but is now increasingly manufacturing not only the finished metals, but the high-tech products that use them, both for foreign markets and for its own. The ch Chinese domestic economy is beginning to demand huge quantities of rare earth materials. It did not demand as recently as a decade ago. Every one of those cars has little electric motors with rare earths in them. Every Chinese person with a, with a laptop has rare earth magnets in the hard drive, rare, some rare earths in the display. On top of its consumer needs, China is facing heavy pollution problems and is itself actively trying to go green. Chinese authorities rarely discuss the country's official policy regarding its export of rare earths. <laughs> but at a conference in Beijing this spring, Leading Chinese government advisor Zhang Anwen made clear that China should no longer be counted on as a primary supplier. Foreign countries should calmly and logically think about this and develop their own minds for their own needs. Our resources are diminishing, and we need these minerals for our own use. And so, China has cut the amount of raw rare earths that it exports by 40 percent in the past year. These limits have also forced chemical companies to relocate their factories to China to gain access to rare earths. Look out for number one. That's their, that's their message to us because they're looking out for themselves and they're not looking out for us. China wasn't always the main supplier of rare earths. For decades, the largest rare earth mine in the world operated in the California desert. America used to be just the number one country in the world when it came to rare earth research, uh, uses, developments, applications. We have completely dropped the ball in that regard. It's all gone to China. Mark Smith is the CEO of Molycorp, the company that runs the Mountain Pass California mine. In the late 90s, the Chinese really started to figure out how much of a resource they had in their country. They had many, many people uh, putting up uh, small shops that were processing these rare earths and selling them you know, wherever they could get the best price. Uh, but they were flooding markets with these materials. Mountain Pass found itself outpriced and, facing additional environmental violations, ceased mining operations in 2002. But now there is a rush to get the mine producing as soon as possible. This hearing will now come to order. And the U.S. government is starting to pay attention. We can, in fact, be the lowest cost producer in the world, but we do need help in that regard. I have 17 uh, scientists and engineers that are competing with over 6,000 
Chinese scientists. Several bills are currently in front of Congress proposing reinvigorating the U.S. rare earth sector through research and development, loan guarantees, and the establishment of a national stockpile of the minerals. All this raises a conundrum for environmentalists waiting for the green technology revolution, says Jack Lifton. You want a green future. You want to go on the path to a green future. That path starts at a mine. The first step in the supply chain for the green world is the mine. And people who have knee-jerk reaction, well, mining is evil, mining is bad, mining is dirty, then forget green. Your world will be black. Molly Corp hopes its Mountain Pass mine will be producing about 20,000 tons of rare earths a year by 2012, but that is only a fraction of what is expected to be a 150,000 ton a year demand. In late October, China quietly resumed the shipment of rare earths, but the minerals are still subject to stringent annual limits that are unlikely to be lifted anytime soon making the race to locate new resources of rare earths outside China an urgent priority.